Bogu. Praise the Lord. Happy Sunday, everyone. It's a good day. It's a good day to be in the land of the living. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, I just uh, want to encourage you on this moment and this time. Uh, just take a moment to give God praise wherever you are for the beauty of another day, for the opportunity to breathe, for the opportunity to see, to move. We give God praise right now. Come on, let's just praise God right now wherever you are. Thank God for another day. Amen. Amen. Uh, certainly we praise God and thank you for joining us for our TBC Live experience. Um, thank you for joining. Thank you for connecting each and every week. Um, as we gather, as everybody is coming in the room, please share. Please call somebody. Tell them church is taking place. Tell them we are worshiping together. Um, thank God for joining. And as you join, make sure you include hashtag TBC Love. We are a church that loves to show God's love. Not only do we thank God and praise God for those that have joined us uh, via Facebook Live, but also those that are on our conference line, uh, we say good morning to each and every one of you. It's a good day. Uh, God blessed us. God continues to bless us, and I know he's going to bless us in this moment. We thank God for you connecting with us and continuing to remain committed to our ministry as we show God's love. We pray God's blessing upon your life. Um, and if there's somebody in your household right now, encourage them to get up. Encourage them to get up. Encourage them to join us in worship wherever they are. There's a word from the Lord today. I want to call to your attention Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42. One verse I'd like to lift up on this morning it comes from the New International Version. Job chapter 42. The next to the last verse. And it reads this, after this, Job lived a hundred and forty years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. Amen. Amen. Thus reads um, God's word, and we thank God for um, how it continues to provide life to our life and inspiration in our daily lives. Uh, with your prayers, I want to preach from the subject as the Holy Spirit shall guide on this morning. Life after this. Life after this. Look to your neighbor wherever you are and tell them, neighbor, uh, the preacher is preaching about life after this let us pray father we thank you we glorify you we magnify your name ask for your help and ask for your presence to provide what is needed in this moment have your way have your way god speak to us we need a word we need god encouragement we need instruction we need clarity I pray, God, for everyone under the sound of my voice, and I pray that you touch them wherever they are. Uh, and I pray that your power works through every device, every phone, every place, um, every car, wherever they may be. Let them know it is well. Let them know God is with them. Let them know that it's going to be all right. In this moment, God, I pray uh, that I not stand in the way, but I pray that you have your way right now this is our prayer together in jesus name we pray all of us say together amen amen king james version shares of chapter 42 verse 16 after this job lived 140 years and saw his children and grandchildren for four generations life after this Brothers and sisters, as we gather on this morning, there are many suggestions that are given on how to live life to the fullest. Communications expert Anna Chu says you have to decide what's important to you. Take more risk. Show your love to people you care about. Live in the present. Ignore the haters. 
Don't compromise your values. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to others. And finally, keep your mind open. Say it again. Decide what's important to you. In other words, it doesn't matter what it is. Take more risks. Sometimes there's danger involved in life, but every reward carries risk with it. You've got to show your love. Look to your neighbor wherever you are and tell them, show your love. And I'm sure, like many of us, we have come to the place in our lives where we wanted to experience the fullness of life. You were ready to live it up. You were tired of being boxed in, and you're ready to live out loud. And as we gather on this day and observe Job's life, notice that its fullness was not recognized until after this. Verse 17 says in the last verse of the 42, 42nd chapter, so Job died old and full of days. And prior to verse 17, verse 16 says, after this... After 41 chapters of terrible loss, suffering, criticism, and condemnation before this, before this, his bio includes a considerable loss of fortune, a quick decline, tragedy in its deepest form. He loses family and fights with friends, but through it all, watch this, he remains faithful. He has a faith so strong that he shares though he slay me yet I will trust him through trials and hardship Job continues to hold on to his faith and don't forget that this book begins with Job's resume that says he's blameless, upright, and a man who shuns evil. Job's story shows that trouble exists in life of the faithful and tragedy takes place even when you trust God. There is so much description of Job's before this and so little shared after this. And I wonder, brothers and sisters who really feels like that on today um that so many things can be described so many things can be said about your before this lifestyle your before this experience but nothing is shared after this for before this, if we look at um, these, this, this, this timely book of Job, it describes of Job's humility. It describes of Job's questioning. It describes of Job's faithful walk. It describes of his friends and his family. It describes of his character and his consistency. Job affirms his promise throughout the book. And one of the beautiful facets of this book of Job is is that it displays how a man can be very human and yet very heavenly at the same time. Are there any human and holy folk um, that have gathered on this morning that can say, in spite of my faithfulness, I sometimes have human moments where I deal with difficulty, I get frustrated, and although I pray, sometimes I feel like fussing. Although I continue to be faithful, sometimes I honestly feel like fighting. Watch this, brothers and sisters. Job feels all the emotions of a man who has endured great loss. He becomes angry, depressed, and anxious and declares his feelings openly. And at the same time, he never drifts from his strong character. He remains consistent through everything. The moment it appears he will curse God and give up on him, he affirms 
confirmed his promise to be faithful even when he doesn't understand uh, uh, what he is giving up. Y'all ain't hear me. He affirms his promise to be faithful even when he doesn't understand what is happening. Job pledges to maintain his integrity despite his circumstances. And I wonder if there are any honest folk that have gathered on this morning that can say, in spite of my circumstances, I'm still going to trust God. In spite of the difficulty, although I do have human moments, I'm honest, I'm still going to remain faithful and trust God through it all. Job says, in essence, you've got to be visionary. You've got to look through. You've got to push through. And that you cannot see everything. You cannot see everything in the future, but you've got to remain faithful. Job says, you've got to, uh, again, be faithful and remain consistent and stay in control and be a model um, that is under control in spite of the ongoing circumstances that happen in your life. I felt that one. Somebody that has gathered on this morning says that life continues to come at me fast. Things continue to change all around me, but I'm going to try to remain consistent and show God that I trust him through it all. And that's really what amazes me about this text, brothers and sisters, and we think about this before this um, experience, before this continues to talk about the ups and downs of life. But real talk, you've got to respect Job's faith walk as you journey through the book of Job. Job remains consistent in his faith in spite of what his family says. Job remains consistent with his faith in spite of what his friends tell him to do. What was the differences in before and after in text. I don't know. If you look at it before chapter 42, there's a whole lot of description of people, places, and things. But then when we get to the last chapter, verse 16, after this, it only says a few brief things. Uh, uh, before, it is a description of the many things that continue to take place in our before this lifestyle. It continues to show how things come and go. It continues to show and share that that you can have a whole lot on one day and things can be taken away on the next day. But who that has gathered on this day can say, I'm going to remain faithful in spite of what I have. I may have a whole lot on today, but I'm still going to have the same faith that if something happens in my life that it goes to a little, I'm still going to trust God through it all. Again, brothers and sisters, if we look at this before this experience that is expressed in the book of Job, it shows us two things. I don't have three. I've just got two. It simply suggests to us that as we journey through our before this life in order to get to our after this experience, you've got to keep pushing and you've got to keep praying. Check out chapter the 42 is, is real plain and it shares with us if you look at verse 7 and so it was after the Lord had spoken these words to Job that the Lord said to his friends my wrath is aroused against you and your two friends for you have not spoken of me what is right as my, my servant Job has but then verse 8 says now therefore they take for yourselves seven bulls and seven rams go to my servant Job and offer up yourselves as burnt offering and my servant Job shall pray for you y'all ain't hear me the same friends that told them that they uh, that Job has sinned and perhaps because of his sin he dealt with suffering of the same folk that Job is praying for in chapter 42 I felt my help right there there's somebody that has gathered on this morning that is going through your before this experience and you've got to get to your place of freedom where you can pray for the same folk that talked about you. You can pray for the same folk that hurt you. You can pray for the same folk that got on your last nerve. 
Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, can you still pray for the folk um, that hurt you? In other words, if we look at the example of Job's lifestyle, he tells us to keep praying and keep pushing. In other words, refuse to take vengeance, refuse to hold grudges, forgive and send them on their way. You ain't, you ain't hear me. Are there any thankful folk on this morning that can say, as I've dealt with my before this experience, I've come to a place of peace where I can pray for those who talk about me, where I can pray for those and push through, even when it does not seem as though it will work out the way I want it to work out. God has a way of giving you the strength to take the high road and not the low road. God has a way of giving you the strength and endurance to keep pushing. And if you keep pushing, I'm done, you will eventually get to an after this experience. If you look at verse 16 again, it says, after this, Job lived 100 years, 140 years, and he saw his children and grandchildren for four generations. Y'all ain't hear me. He experienced a whole lot of loss in his before this life, but because he kept on pushing and he kept on praying, after this, uh, he experienced restoration. Are there any praises right now that can say, I'm going to praise God because through it all in my before this, I felt like giving up, but because I kept on pushing and I kept on praying, now that I've got to my after this experience, I'm going to thank God because he's given me the strength to make it through it all. In other words, brothers and sisters, as we gather on this morning, you've just got to simply keep on living, keep on living in this life, uh, because in this life, you will experience hardship. In this life, you will experience loss. Uh, in this life, you will experience deficits. Uh, in this life, you will experience pain. Uh, but if you keep on living, uh, you will get to an afterlife. Uh, that is, after this, look at the text. It says that Job lived 140 years. He saw what he saw. But then it got to verse 17 that says Job died. I know it sounds like a sad story. And if we look at the entire book of Job, it sometimes is frustrating to see somebody that has been so faithful that continues to go through so much difficulty. But Job continued to live. He continued to push and he continued to pray. Job lived and he saw. But then the last verse of Job says he died. He died full of years. Y'all ain't hear me. He died old and full of days. Full of years could also be described as bountiful blessings. After Job pushed and prayed through 41 chapters, God gives him bountiful blessings. He gets twice as much as before. His family is blessed. He lives another 140 years and sees three generations following. The good news is, brothers and sisters, that for the faithful is that you've got to continue pushing through trials and tribulations. You've got to continue saying through through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Uh, through it all in our final future, uh, we've got to trust God that God will come through with bountiful blessings. Uh, are there any praises on today uh, that can say, God, I thank you uh, that through it all, uh, God has given me bountiful blessings. Uh, through it all, uh, God has brought me from a mighty long way. My testimony is you don't know my story. You don't know the 41 chapters that I've been through. But as I think back over my life, before this was hard, but I thank God 
for being able to get through after this. I've kept on pushing. I've kept on praying. And I'm still standing right now. Are there any thankful folk on today? that can say you don't know my story of my before this experience but because I kept on pushing and I kept on praying I'm still standing and because I'm still standing I've gotten to my after this season I'm done brothers and sisters I know somebody is saying how can you preach a sermon and not talk about the cross well brothers and sisters if you know this story this story at the end of chapter 42 uh, talks about Job dying uh, and I know somebody is saying what does that have to do with anything brothers and sisters there will be also an after this life uh, that the Bible continues to share about uh, where sometimes it is described uh, as a deathly moment uh, but as we know and think about the story uh, the same old story that is told every Sunday after Sunday uh, it lets us know uh, that although death may be experienced on Friday uh, although you may feel bad on Saturday uh, if you keep on pushing and you keep on praying uh, on Sunday morning uh, can I go old school early Sunday morning uh, you got to know that things can be turned around in your life before this they saw a cross before this they saw death before this they experienced the grave but if you keep on pushing and praying you're gonna get to your Sunday morning experience after this after this after this I promise you if you keep on pushing and you keep on praying there will be an after experience for you I'm so glad because of our belief I'm so glad because of our pushing and perseverance if you continue to keep the faith God will provide God will show up God will continue to sustain. God will keep you. God will bless you. You will experience bountiful blessings in your life. There's someone today that is saying, I've been going through a whole lot of chapters of grief, of trouble, trial, tribulations. I've seen things taken away from me. But I'm here to tell you right now, if you keep on pushing, and keep on praying you're going to make it to an after this experience it may not be today we look at the story of Job it didn't happen overnight but if you remain faithful you continue to believe I promise you I promise you you're going to make it I promise you you're going to get through it I promise you it will be a after this experience and I'm so glad that if you continue to believe won't be a short period and I thought about that thing as I, I sat with it this week why is it why is it why is it that when you get to your after this experience that there's not a whole lot of it description <laughs> before this when you're going through hell it's written books are written stories are shared posts are posted through social media when you're going through it in your before season everybody got a whole lot to say you got a whole lot to see whole lot is written but notice when Job finally makes it to after this in 42 it's only two verses a half of one and then the end he dies and this is what the Holy Spirit shared with me. When you finally make it to your after this season, you're going to be too busy living instead of worrying about what others are saying. You're going to be too busy enjoying your life that you're not going to be consumed with what happened before. Look at it. Verse 16. After this, stop there. Job lived we could really end it right there you experienced a whole lot of before this but I'm saying today 
because you've been free, because you've been faithful, now's the time to live in your after this season. Live it. Live it up. Live it out loud. Now, there's one prerequisite that is required in order for you to make it to after this. You got to let go some things from before. Notice the practice of Job. He could have he could have gotten even with his friends. But he chose to pray for him. He could have gotten even with the ones who hurt him. But he chose to pray for him. So my encouragement for you today is to remain faithful to make it to your life after this. Know this, that in after this, even if it ends here, if you believe and you receive the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, there is another after this. That's eschatological thought. That's eschatology. That's hope in tomorrow. That's hope for what is to come. That is, earth has no sorrow, heaven cannot heal. That means earth will be before this, but because of our belief, after this, there will be a place where we don't have to deal with trials, tribulations, death, finance, but every day will be like Sunday, and Sabbath will have no end. I pray that you remain faithful till you make it to after this, wherever it is, whenever it will be. So here's my prayer, and here's my invitation all in the same. My prayer is that you receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ sets you free to make it to after this. Now, it's not a pass to not deal with difficulty. Notice that Job still dealt with stuff, although he believed. But because of his belief, he was able to overcome. Think about the story. The things that took place and happened to Job had to be uh, done or given permission by God. Satan worked, but God had to give the permission. And I'm saying today, if you continue to trust and believe, it's going to hurt. You're going to have to go through, but you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You are going to make it. That's the last thing I'm going to say. Look to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it to life after this. I'm excited to see you live in your after this life right now. Make it to your chapter 42. Live it. Live it. Live it. Believe it. Trust it. Two things you got to do in order to make it to after this. Keep pushing and keep praying. This is what I want to do. Um, I'm first going to pray and then we're going to share a little bit. Let us pray right now. Father, give those that are listening the strength to keep pushing. Father, give them what they need to overcome, to push through, to remain faithful. God, give them wisdom. Give them the wisdom that Job had. Because on his resume, he was one that was considered upright and blameless. So I pray, God, that you give the same wisdom to everyone that is gathered, that has sacrificed the time to hear your word. And I pray that as your word that has been shared, your power will give the increase in everyone's life. And I pray that you don't do it next week, next month, next year. I pray that you do it right now. We need you right now. God, as you provide, I pray that we as listeners and hearers receive. We receive it and we believe it. Now, God, I'm praying, God, for those that may not know you, that have never acknowledged, believed, and confessed in the good news of your gospel. And I pray, God, that now in this moment, if they feel it, if they know it, if you have affirmed it and confirmed it, I pray that they will give their life and they will use their life as a living sacrifice to help others that aren't saved. 
I'm praying, God, that there is a move of the Holy Spirit in this moment, but also in this place. I'm praying that there is a move of the Holy Spirit across every device and every home and every community, every every car, every neighborhood, every job. Whoever is listening, I pray that the move of the Holy Spirit works right now. I'm praying that the Holy Spirit offers healing in the name of Jesus. I'm praying that the Holy Spirit offers comfort that allow, allows the hearers to know that they may be going through before this right now, but if they continue to push and pray, they're going to make it to after this. God, and if there's any doubt, if there's any non-belief, unbelief, I'm praying that you remove it right now in the name of Jesus. As your word says, if we ask, it shall be given. If we seek, we shall find. If we knock, the door shall be open. So we're we're asking, we're seeking, and we're knocking right now in the name of Jesus. God, we're standing interceding on behalf of not just ourselves, but we're praying for our families, our friends, our neighbors. We're praying for those that have hurt us. We're praying for those that have hindered us. We're praying for those that have kept us from being the best that we possibly can. And I'm praying that your Holy Spirit works right now in the name of Jesus that provides for forgiveness forgiveness because of your son that died on the cross for our sins we thank you and we believe right now and your power that is working that lets us know that who the son sets free is free indeed so as we forgive free us free us to move forward and push toward our after this and God we ask for nothing more nothing less than and for deliverance in the name of Jesus. Now, God, as you deliver us, continue to show us the way, and we'll keep on pushing. This is our prayer together. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all of us say together, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise wherever you are. He's worthy for all of our praise, and we thank you for life after this. Let the church say amen. It's definitely been a good day. We thank you for continuing to connect with us and remain committed. Um, several ways to connect with us, and we thank God for your faithfulness as you keep on pushing through a COVID-19 pandemic. Notice that through the COVID-19 pandemic, we still had other trials and tribulations that have showed up. But thankfully, because of God's power and provision, we're still standing. We're still here. We're still thriving. We're still being blessed. We're still being bountifully blessed. And we thank God for it. But we could not remain connected without your commitment. So first of all, we thank you for remaining connected through us, through our conference line. Our conference line is 515-603-3179. Access code 689-859-POUND. You can connect with us several days throughout the week. And I want you to listen out, check Check out our website, check out our social media pages because we're going to increase opportunities to connect. Amen, somebody. So our conference line will be an important piece and tool that will be used. Our Facebook Live and also as we continue to increase, we're excited to look forward to and use other tools to remain committed and connected. Now, as you remain connected through our conference line, Join us each and every Monday night, 8 p.m. for our I Believe prayer call. We believe in the power of prayer at Tabernacle. We believe in the power of prayer at Tabernacle. Prayer works and prayer changes things. That's an effective tool that has helped us through this season. The past several months, although we may not have seen each other face to face, we've been connected through the power of prayer. And I thank God for your commitment to remain connected. If you have not joined us, don't wait until next week. Join us tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time through our conference line. As well, we're excited and we're thankful for our teachers 
teaching moment. Our study in the word moment is Tuesday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, same conference line. Join us. Our facilitator is Reverend William D. House III. He is blessing us. He is working hard and diligently to help us continue to grow. And I thank God to not only call him dad, but I thank God to have him in partnership in ministry here at TBC. As well, we're connecting and checking in on each other. There's a whole lot that can take place throughout the week. Amen. There's a whole lot that can happen. Uh, seasons come and go and things shift quickly. So we check in on Saturday at 12 p.m. each Saturday at 12 Eastern Standard Time. Noon, noon. Join us on our conference count as we just simply check in and make sure that everybody's doing all right. Through that, we're also able to give helpful updates of our planning for our worship experience on Sunday or as well what will be happening in the upcoming week. We praise God for you remaining committed as well. We thank God for ways to give, give Lafay. Tabernacle Baptist Church, Chesterfield, Cash App, Money Sign, TBC, Chesterfield. Our website, www.tbcchesterfield.org. And last but certainly not least, thank you for your mail-in commitments as well. Uh, Chesterfield, Tabernacle Baptist Church, Chesterfield, P.O. Box 255, Chesterfield, Virginia 23832. Amen. It's been a good day, and certainly we thank God for your commitment. No song of the week, but there's a challenge. The challenge for this week, two things. First thing is, as you've received the instructions in the sermon, keep praying and keep pushing. I want you to pray for your enemy this week. Pray for those that have hurt you. Let go and let God. That's the first thing. Pray for your enemy. Pray for those that have hurt you. Write them down. Write them down on a prayer list. Call them by name. Pray for them. Even pray for those that have talked about you. Let go and let God. The second thing is take the high road this week. Don't go low. Go high. When they go low, they go, you go high. When they go low, you go high. Uh, we give shout out to our real uh, first lady, Michelle Obama. Amen, somebody. When they go low, you go high. Let us continue to remain committed, push and pray. But remember, pray for somebody. But specifically on this week, forgive somebody. Let it go. You've been carrying it for far too long. You've been carrying it for 41 chapters. It's time to walk into your 42nd chapter free. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Keep on pushing, keep praying, but also take the high road on this week. It's been a good day. We thank God for God's grace, God's mercy. Um, let us look to the Lord in prayer one more time. Father, keep those that are gathered on today. Father, comfort those that are troubled on today. Father, protect those and keep them for any, from any hurt, harm, or danger. But most of all, God, please continue to provide your power and presence so that we will continue to take the high road on this week. Not only this week, but in days to come. We thank you for your grace and mercy that continues to lead us and guide us. And God, after it's all said and done, if we had but 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough. So we continue to thank you and praise you for all that you continue to do. Thank you so much for receiving. Thank you for so much for giving. Thank you so much for covering. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all of us say together, amen, amen, and amen. Have a blessed week. We love you, and God does too. Peace. On behalf of Pastor House and the Tabernacle Church family, we invite you to become a part of God's family. We believe that through the power of the Holy Spirit, God helps us to determine where we are in our relationship with Him. Through the power of the Spirit, He lets us know if we should establish a relationship with Him or be united with Him. 
So, if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we invite you to do it today. We invite you to become a part of the family of God. We are here to help you continue your journey with Christ. So, email us at tbcchesterfield at gmail.com or call us at 804 804- 739-2169. And perhaps you felt the nudge of the Spirit telling you to reunite with God or to become a part of a church family. We encourage you to do the same. To contact us by email at tbcchesterfield at gmail.com or call us at 804 804- 739-2169. We will rejoice with you in your decision and also help you to continue your journey with Christ. We encourage you to call us and leave a name that you can be reached and a telephone number that we might return your call. We pray that God bless you and keep you until we meet again. Stay connected with TBC on each Monday evening at 8 p.m. I believe Paracall. Dial in 515-603-3179. Access code 689-859-POUND. Study in the Word each Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. with Rev. William House III. Dial in 515-603-3179. Access code 689-859-POUND. Saturday, TBC Noon Check-In. Dial in 515-603-3179. Access code 689-859-POUND. Sunday morning online worship service through Facebook Live at 10 a.m. Conference line. Dial in 515-603-3179. Access code 689-859-POUND. Follow Tabernacle Baptist Church on Facebook at Tabernacle Baptist Church Chesterfield and Instagram at TBC Chesterfield.